Our guest on this episode is a Nigerian actor and film producer, a man who left his banking job to embrace his passion and has since won the heart of Nollywood lovers. His versatility and ability to interpret varying characters has shut him up to become one of the most sought after actors in Nigeria. He's a loving father and a husband. Let's make welcome the one and only Jobestina. <laughs> 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 welcome. <laughs> Thanks for the intro. <laughs> yeah, I need to do that way, like Jobbe, 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 Stina. I mean, you did um, greatly in that movie. Thank you. That was the movie that won me over. Yeah, me too. Me right? too. Yeah. I cried. I said that movie like end. ten times, mm -hmm. and I did not stop crying every time I watched it again and again. <laughs> How was it? Was, was it for you to interpret that character? Well, it was a blessing. Mm -hmm. it was a blessing. I mean, we did it, and while I was doing it, I was just praying to God that you guys would love it, it would like it, mm -hmm. and then. You turn to love in it. Mm -hmm. and I just feel totally blessed by that. It was a very, very challenging character for me. Okay. Uh, so yeah. Picture Perfect is um, um, expanding into the series now. Absolutely. So oh, wow. tell us about that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, we're going to be raising Jobestina. Mm -hmm. I remember from the last, from the um, feature film, mm -hmm. you had the, the ending part where the child, we named the, ch yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. named the child Jobestina. So now you're going to see the, the life after that, the banters, the Get ready for the drama, though. Hmm. There's a lot of drama. Uh, give it's us always a spoiler. drama. Wow. <laughs> Just give us a no little spoiler. spoiler. Well, um, you're going to have to see it. Man. Okay, so looking <laughs> at the story, since I watched the film Picture mm. Perfect and now becoming a series, do you think um, Job Bestina, no, your own is Job, Job right? Do mm. you think Job will be towing the line of Funke Akindele, the Jennifer thing, trying to learn how to be posh and maybe never become posh? Well, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> that yet. But um, mention, uh, me, um, as you just mentioned, the funky architecture, that, that's a very big inspiration for me. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. um, I've always seen myself um, towing that same blueprint as Funke, you know. Um, she has, probably has to be my only inspiration in the game in terms mm -hmm. of our career path. Mm -hmm. I think she's exceptionally talented and blessed. Right. So I also see Jobe being maybe the, the, the next next biggest thing okay. since Jennifer. Sure. Yeah, mm. I'm, I believe so. Okay. Right. Don't worry, we love it Strongly. so much. Yeah. <laughs> so is it that you always knew this was what you wanted or you just stumbled into the industry and this is just a game of luck mm. for you? Um, well, I wanted to, to achieve the African dream. Mm. And the African dream for me was coming back to Nigeria and becoming successful. You know, you tried music for a while, if I'm correct. As an as an executive, okay. I, I used to own a record label called Diesel Music. Mm. I signed about three artists, and that's where I lost um, all my money before coming to Nollywood. Mm. When I came to Nigeria initially in 2010, I wanted to be, I not that I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to, to discover myself, mm. and in doing that, you're gonna have to do a million things mm. until you get there. You know, so I wasn't limiting myself to anything. I didn't know how to sing, you know, I, I can't even sing to save my own life. Mm. Like, you know, but I realized, I figured acting was something that I, I found interesting and I could learn, you know, and I gave that a shot. In 2010, it was a total failure. I, I, I didn't know anybody in Nigeria at the time, so I shot my own film. I was highly duped. I mean, this, you know how things mm. are when mm. you stumble into, into them. JJC. Yeah, you know, and um, the movie never came out, but it, it paved the way. Okay. It led me on that path. You know, so I did that, and I couldn't get any support from anybody at the time, so I dropped it. And then, having a little bit of cash, I figured, okay, what else do I like? Entertainment is something that I want. I'm highly inspired by the Two Face, the band, you know, and all these guys. You know what I'm saying? And I said, music. You know, I had a little bit of cash. Let's sign some artists. You mm -hmm. know, and try that out. Again, I stumbled into something I knew nothing about. You know, but did that for about three and a half years. Um, precisely 2011 to 2014, spent up all my money doing that and I went broke and I figured what else was I going to do. Quitting was never an option and being defeated by Nigeria was never going to be an option for me. So, I, I, you know, I, it humbled me and I, went and I started over, mm. you know, came back to Nollywood and I, I, Rookie Sander is a family friend, you know, and she was very prominent in the game at the time. So I gave her a call and she gave me a role in one of her films. And from that moment, you know, I just kept on going from set to set, you know, putting all my, my all into it. And here what did you learn from that journey? Uh, my journey is very spiritual. My journey is very, I'm, I didn't stumble on anything, really. I had a blueprint of what I want. 
you know, I'm exactly where I want to be in life. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know what we say is you have to, where you are right now is where you need to be to be where you want to go. You know, I just never knew how challenging or what it was going to take out of me. But to answer your question, I had all it takes, but it took everything I got. Mm. I hope that answers your question. And mm, when you say you took everything you had and everything, what did you lose the most? Apart from the financial, did you lose friends? Did you lose people along the way that were, that were supportive when you had it all and all of a sudden they were gone? Well, uh, my journey, I, I, I like to look at my journey as on, um, on the journey to unbecoming. Sometimes it's not always about becoming, you know. Living in America, I wanted to become this. I wanted to become like the Dubai, the Two Face, the you know the G Mikes, the, the great actors and great people out there mm. doing big things. But when I got here, in you know, in the line of my struggle, I realized that I needed to unbecome who I was to actually become who I wanted to be. Mm. So my my game is on the reverse. I'm Ameri I'm Nigerian American. You know what I'm saying. I, I have a bachelor's degree in accounting from mm. DeVry University in America. I have a master's mm -hmm. degree in marketing from Kellogg in, in, Kellogg in, in America. Um, I have a beautiful woman, you know, we were married at the time, you know, and I had a beautiful daughter, you know, and I'm from a, you know, relatively wealthy home, thank God for grace. But here I am trying to be somebody on the reverse where everybody goes from grass to grace. Mm -hmm. So I'm going from grace to glory now. Mm -hmm. You know, so it becomes harder because you have an option. People don't, that don't know any other thing or they don't have an option, that's their passion and they're on that journey to becoming something. But I had all these things and I wanted something else. I wanted what they had, which mm -hmm. means I had to become who they were. I had to let go of everything I had, you know. So the American passport, the everything, to throw it away. The, um, coming from a wealthy home, throw it away. The American passport is probably locked in somewhere. No, I was going to say. Yeah, locked in somewhere at the time. No, it's out okay. now. It, right. it goes everywhere now. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the degrees the, from school, put it aside. Mm. You know what I'm saying? No mommies, no daddies, no, no, nothing. My woman, put it aside. My daughter, put it aside. I had to give up everything. You know what I'm saying? In so it was a selfish journey? A very selfish journey that made me self-aware. Mm. Mm. It was... A, a, a journey of risk I would never advise anybody to take. But I'll tell you, if you do want the benefit of something, you need to want the cost of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the question I asked myself at the time was, which kept me going, was more like, was I willing to spend a few years of my life the way most people want so I can spend the rest of my life the way they cannot? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I figured I played my card pretty well, feeling that, okay, what's there to lose at the end of the day, you know? I go back to America, but I never wanted to live this life without saying I did it. I tried my best. Mm. You know, I give it my all. But thank God for, for this. Okay, let's okay. let's talk um. about um, stereotype perspective. You know, because most of your movies were either playing the bad boy, the playboy, or you know, carrying guns and playing girls. Does it affect your life in any way, like real life? Maybe you're meeting somebody and then the person's already judging you that this is Bolalia. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Especially in this part of the world where we're very judgmental, mm -hmm. people in Nigeria, in the society, and you, you know you can't blame them. I mean, we're we're all guilty of it at some point in life. I. I, I drew up my, my career, I'm like a product. Mm. I, tra I treated myself as a phone that needed to be sold. Mm. So I just didn't stumble on anything. I knew exactly what I'm doing and how I do it. But the only thing I never knew was how much grace and if God was actually with it. I mean, if you knew that God was with it and this was what the path was, you wouldn't have to try. Mm. You just go straight to it. So I knew exactly what I wanted and how I wanted to do it. But then, you know, you, you got to wait on God because God is God's just the only key to these things happening. Mm -hmm. You know, so I knew what I wanted in life. So I like to talk about God and you having yeah. your blueprints mm -hmm. and all that. But do you think your physique helped you in the industry? Actually, when you look at the industry, I don't think we have a lot of handsome men in the industry. So would you say the way you're built and how you That's have... a shade on a lot of men. <laughs> 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 would you say the way you are built and how the industry is right now made it easier for you to be able to break in and be one of the most sought after male actors in Nigeria? Right I wouldn't now? agree to that. Okay. But I will tell you that everything plays a part in the entire process. Mm. Mm -hmm. If you want to become a successful musician, 
what is the thing we need to know about you? You have a great voice. When you hear people like Simi, you don't even know that Simi, you just want to hear more because of the phenomenal kind of voice mm -hmm. he has. People like Tewa Savage and, you know, and other people like that. Now, for movies, it's a picture. Mm -hmm. picture people perfect. want to see something attractive. Those are the first things I realized that I needed to do. So you worked on it? To work on me. Great. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So mm. going to the gym is one of the hardest things you could do. I mean, it's, it's pain. I know. But I'm so dogged with my hustle and my belief in my determination to say, if you can successfully create a, a workout plan for yourself and achieve it, you can become successful doing anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, one thing that has been consistent in this conversation is God, spirituality, your journey is spiritual. So how spiritual would you say you are? Would you say you're the church guy or...? Oh, I'm far from religious. I'm not religious at all. I'm religion. very spiritual. You're yeah. just very spiritual. I have a Bible that I believe in. That's enough for me. I read it. I have my, you know, confidence with God. I have my moments, you know, and it works perfectly for me. Mm. So you don't go to church? No, I don't. Okay, okay. let's talk about the lifestyle in Nollywood. So some of the opinion that the ladies, for the actors right now, that the ladies display more wealth. Like you see, them, it looks like they're making headway more than the guys in the industry. Is there a paid disparity and what exactly is going on in that space? Um, honestly, I couldn't really speak on that. Um, see, I tell people, um, I, I don't do a lot of interviews because my journey is very spiritual to me. I'm not part of that. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't see myself in that mm. circle of Nollywood and the lifestyle. No, no, no. I have a purpose. I left America to achieve something, my African dream. Mm. So Nollywood, it's, it's, uh, it's encompassing, or it's encompassed mm. in that. I might be doing something else tomorrow. I have a goal, I have where I see myself. So this part, it's a chapter. And not one book tells the tale of an entire book, uh, story. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to looking at the female doing better and men, I don't know how, why they do better, mm -hmm. how they do better. It's none of my business. Mm -hmm. But do you agree they do better? I don't agree. Okay. What I understand is if I'm doing as well, I don't think any woman is doing better than me. Okay, but do you think there's I, a pay disparity? I mean, you're there and you're doing the job. So is there a pay disparity right now? I don't know. I don't know how okay. much they get paid. Okay. I can I, see. We're all actors, but everybody negotiates based on your value. You, the value. You know what I'm saying? If, if, if you see an immortology and on the set, I mean, you know mm -hmm. how much, you know, is being paid. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? And if you see other actors and you're like, okay, then maybe these people wouldn't get as much, but people do get paid. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people package. Pick Instagram. Mm -hmm. I, what, I say to, what I say to myself is, are your moments actually memorable? Mm -hmm. Or are they created or manufactured just for the photo? I, I'm a very, like, there's I have, I'm, zero tolerance for tardiness. Mm. I don't play. I don't have time for all that. You know, I have kids, I'm on a journey, and I need to achieve my goal. So all those things, that the, the, the lifestyle and everything that surrounds it, I, I don't pay any attention to that. I respect everybody for who they are, whatever they do to make their money, whatever. As long as you're, you know, you're okay. I'm, I'm fine with you. Okay, so you said something that tomorrow you might be doing something else. Absolutely. So does that mean acting is not the last bus stop? There's more to come? Oh, acting is definitely not my last bus stop. Mm. Acting is another, another, how can, I, how can I put this? It's an added advantage. and It's another thing that I've realized and discovered in myself. Mm. I, I'm, I can stop acting today, and then maybe in the next five years, I stumbled on the road with Denzel or somebody, and then you see me in that film. Mm. It is now part of, I can drive, I can ride bicycles, oh. I can cook noodles, I can act. <laughs> 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 I like that. Yeah, you, so it's, you know, this, I'm building myself. This is part of the things that I can do. This mm -hmm. is like, you know, my capabilities. So acting, for me, is a capability. It's not my career. Okay. Yeah. It's All a capability right. that's opened doors for me in I can tell you that you break a lot of acts on a daily basis when you post your beautiful wife on social media. So, and you guys were separated for a while. How did you reconcile? And what's your message to a lot of actors that feel, okay, now that I'm big, I can play around and I can do all that. But you're one person that you're most sought after, but you still find way to make sure that the love of your life is always present in everything you do. In well, less than 20 seconds, still, we have to go. Well, the only way I can answer that is like my purpose. My, it's always been about my wife and my family. Everything I've done. It's been for my wife and my family. Mm. It's just now 
that people, you know, it, it's coming to life. Mm. You know, I had to lose myself to get find myself. So that's what All right. And that's how I wrap up this very interesting conversation on Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our content by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you, as always, to go to my co-anchors, Ewa Oluwa Ritu, Ife Oluwa Shunkaye, and of course, the entire production team. And definitely our studio guest, Bola Lady Nolowo. Thank you for being here. My name is Elsie Godwin saying thank you for watching and see you later.